This clay tutorial will help you take your pottery skills to the next level and it will show you how to sculpt delicate facial features using your hands and a variety of tools. Face jugs will be the inspiration for this pottery lesson. If you've never heard of face jugs, they are a traditional form of pottery created by African slaves in the American South. Face jugs are not only interesting to look at, they have a very important place in American history. A quick Google search will answer any questions that you have about what face jugs are and why they're created and how art is so important to the human experience. If you love art, don't forget to subscribe so you never miss a tutorial. The first part of the face we will sculpt are the eye sockets. And you're gonna take your thumb or any of the clay tools and you're gonna press in to give it the illusion of an eye socket and it also gives it really nice cheekbones and a wonderful place to put your nose. Clay is stronger than you think, so really press in there and make sure that you have deep indentions. Even if you go all the way through, a simple patch using your score slip and blend method can fix any mistake that you made. I'll be using coils for almost every facial feature that you sculpt. And I'm gonna start with the eyebrows because it is so easy. And all you need are two coils, the size of the eyebrows that you would like. They could be really fine and manicured. You could even pull a Frida Kahlo and do a unibrow. And you just take your hand and you roll a coil to the size that makes sense for your pot. As you know from before, you will score, slip, and blend every single addition. It doesn't matter how small it is, if you're attaching two new pieces of clay to each other, score, slip, and blend will make sure that your clay will stay together, that it will dry uniformly, and that pieces won't fall off once your face jug has completely dried out. Find a clay tool that you like because it is difficult to get your finger into the small areas with a piece of pottery that's this small. If you're working larger, you might be able to use your hands, but I find that using clay tools really makes sure that I can blend and your facial features wanna not look separate from your face. You wanna blend them to where you can't tell where they were attached. Adding a variety of texture is a great way to take your clay to the next level. I'm carving with my shish kebab stick that I'm using for score marks, and I'm carving a hair-like texture so it stands out from the face of my face jug and it looks like a raised surface with a hair-like texture. It's time to add the nose, and just like your eyebrows, you're gonna start with a coil. Place it on your face jug and take away clay or add clay until it's the perfect size. This is the right size. Take your fingers and make the end come to a point and then tap it on your table to make it look like a carrot. So the skinny end goes between the eyes towards the eyebrows and the fatter end goes towards the bottom. Score, slip, and blend. Even this tiny part of your face needs to be score slipped and blend so it stays stuck on your clay when your clay dries out and so that your clay can dry uniformly. I'm using a clay tool because I have a hard time getting all the way around just with my hands and I'm making sure that I'm blending the two parts of the clay to each other. So when I look at it, you can't see a line of separation, but it looks like a real nose, like it's protruding from your face and it wasn't just stuck on there. Shape your nose using your fingers. Make it look like a heart or a triangle where it has a point and then it has two ends that stick out. And this is the fun part, making the nostrils. I take my shish kebab stick and I put a delicate um, hole on both sides and I pull to the side to make it more of an oval and less of a perfect circle. Then I just play around with forming my nose and I always suggest looking at a friend, looking in the mirror, or looking at a picture of a nose to make sure you get it just right. Just like people, every nose is different, so play around with it until it looks right to you. Make your face jug realistic. Take your shish kebab stick and carve an indention from the nose to your top lip. I believe that's called the Cupid's bow and it gives your face jug even more realistic qualities. And your lips are just two coils that you roll um, and your bottom lip is gonna be fatter and longer than your top lip. So measure it 
And then you're going to take the ends and kind of pinch them to make them go from fat in the middle to smaller at the ends. You're gonna do the same thing with the top lip or the top coil, and it does need to be a little bit shorter and a little bit skinnier. Once you have your lips, you can play around with facial expressions. I was feeling a little salty today, so I'm making my face jug have a pout. And then, of course, you have to score, slip, and blend both of your coils to your face jug. I was a little overzealous with my score marks, but that's nothing I can't fix in the blending stage. And just like with the other facial features, I'm using this clay tool to get around all the edges and make it look like it's not a different part of the face, but it's really attached on there. So blending is a super important step, not just to make sure that your clay stays together, but to give it that realistic quality of your face. Now on your top lip, you're gonna follow your Cupid's bow and you're gonna put an indention in the center of your top lip. Um, and you wanna always look at your face from different angles and from the sides to make sure it really looks the way you want it to look. Really picky about my nose and I always overwork it. So I'm kinda carving in the nostril on the side so it looks like it has that rounded shape. But be careful, the nose is really fragile and to be honest, this is actually the second nose I made on this face jug. I just edited out the mistake that I made the first time. Making the eyes is definitely my favorite part. Start with a sphere of clay that you test the size for, and if it fits in the eye socket, um, it's the right size. And you're gonna use that same sphere, you're gonna cut it in half, and you're gonna score and slip half of it in one eye socket and the other half in the other. It's not gonna be perfectly round because when you press down, the clay expands, but it will look realistic um, even though it's not a perfect circle. Now the eyelid is gonna be probably the smallest detail that you add, and I'm gonna show you how to do it in two different ways. On this eye, I'm going to score and slip this tiny little coil that I pinched flat, and I'm gonna score and slip that to the eyeball before I score and slip the whole thing inside the eye socket. So I'm kinda gonna make my eye outside of the eye socket. Um, and yes, you do have to score and slip. And I can't really blend it that well without messing up the overlap. So I just take my shish kebab stick and press the slip into the cracks and crevices to make sure it's really stuck on there. Once I have that pre-made, I'm gonna score and slip that whole piece inside the eye socket. It does take a little finesse to get that in the eye socket and pressed down and blended without smushing your whole eye. So just kind of gently press it in there, look at it from different angles and use your clay tools to make sure each piece is really stuck on there. Um, you're gonna do on the other side, I'm gonna show you a second way and that is I'm gonna go ahead and score and slip the eyeball in first and then I go back and I add the little tiny eyelid once the eyeball scored and slipped in there. I really couldn't decide which technique I preferred. They both definitely take finesse. This is the more intricate part of working with the face. So I think either way you do it is fine. It's just a matter of um, what you think works best for you. And don't be scared to rip that eye all the way out and restart it, just like I did with my nose that you didn't see. If you ever do something in clay and you just hate how it looks, just rip it out, do it again, um, spray your clay down, and you can rework your clay as many times as you need to. If you have a needle tool, that's a great tool to get in those cracks and crevices, but I find the shish kebab stick to work just as well. Um, and I'm just pressing down, making sure that the eye socket and the eyelid and the eyeball are all connected to themselves. When this dries out a little bit, I will make sure that I carve some more details in, but because the clay is still kind of wet, I'm gonna wait a day um, before I add tons of detail. Now what I will add today, um, I press into my clay to give it a pupil, and I'm just lightly carving an iris so it looks like my face jug is looking to the side. Be careful with this step, you don't want your face jug to look cross-eyed, or maybe you do, if that's your thing, and you can kind of play around with facial expressions and what direction your clay is looking. I went back and I added texture to my eyebrows because I kind of smushed it when I was working. And now that you know how to make all these facial features, you can make anything with small pieces of clay that you make coils and that you model with your hands. The options are endless, ears, horns, 
animal ears, spikes, mohawks, goatees, beards, mustaches, anything you can think of that you can model with your hand, score, slip, and blend to your clay that doesn't stick out a whole bunch, that is an awesome addition to your face jug besides these basic facial features. Your clay starts to gradually dry out. You can really play around with different textures. Um, smooth is just one texture for clay and you can carve in and draw different textures. I'm gonna put the link to my clay texture video above. So click that if you're interested in taking your textures to the next level. And I'll also show you how to make a handle if you click the link for this video to show you how to make a handle out of clay. Basically, it's just a coil that you kind of tap on the table to make the ends, and of course, score, slip, and blend. That's how you sculpt basic facial features using clay. Have fun, make it your own style, because your face can look any way that you would like.